What is going on everybody? So I am back today to do another episode of The Criterion Corner and this is the segment on my channel where I pull a film from the Criterion Collection and talk about it in great detail. And this film was actually recommended to me by an awesome guy named John who is actually the director of an amazing film called My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To which is one of my favorite films of like the past five years. It's absolutely beautiful. Streaming on Shutter, Amazon Prime, you can find it pretty much anywhere but it's amazing go watch it. It's really just a phenomenal film that deserves your attention, but I was uh, chatting with him and he recommended I check out Todd Haynes' film Safe. And I'd heard this mentioned before and as I watched the film I realized that while I was in film school I actually watched segments from this movie in film school, which is really cool. And I can't believe I hadn't gotten around to watching the full film until now, but I appreciate the recommendation, John, and I look forward to talking about it in the review. Safe is directed by Todd Haynes. Carol, a typical upper middle-class housewife begins to complain of vague symptoms of illness. She doesn't feel right, has unexplained headaches, congestion, a dry cough, nosebleeds, vomiting, and trouble breathing. Her family doctor treats her concerns dismissively and suggests a psychiatrist. Eventually, an allergist tells her that she has environmental illness. So, I just want to start by saying this is one of the most uniquely weird films that I've ever watched. And by uniquely weird, I mean that tonally, and like even classifying this to a specific genre is really difficult. And it was funny because I was talking with John after the movie was over and he was discussing that in his opinion, this feels like a horror movie with virtually no horror elements. And I think that's a really cool way to look at it because there is a lot of that in the film. So you're introduced to Julianne Moore's character. She's this housewife who her husband works all the time. They have a young son. She's constantly at her house by herself. She goes and uh, takes this like yoga class or something where, she, where we see her at. Um, she goes and like picks up the laundry, just day-to-day -day random stuff. And really early on in the film, she starts showing symptoms of being sick. And you get little snippets of like her feeling of isolation and loneliness. And what I love about it is the cinematography really helps with that. The beginning of this film is a lot of wide shots where it's just her in a very empty, vacant space. And so we're seeing her in those different situations throughout the entire film. And there's really great scenes, like one of the first scenes that she has a really violent coughing fit. She's on the road driving and when she's on the road she's got a radio station turned on that's like this religious extremist talking about the end times and just like babbling on about this insane thing. She starts coughing hysterically at the fumes coming out of the car in front of her. And throughout the film, she's constantly expressing to her husband and people around her that she's getting sick. And it's almost like everyone is treating her like she's crazy, right out of the gate. And there's this feeling of isolation that is so horrifying where you think about in your own life, you get to a point where no one around you believes what you have to say. No one around you is going to look and say, okay, you're being normal, everything is fine, where they would just isolate you and treat you differently simply because you're saying, hey, I'm sick, and you went to the doctor, and the doctor says, no, you're not. And so everyone's like, well, if this doctor says you're not sick, then you're probably not sick. And it's really interesting to see sort of the downward spiral of Julianne Moore's character to where it just gets worse and worse and worse for her. And I thought what was really interesting is there's this dichotomy introduced of this idea that she has control of her life and she gets to a point where she finds out about this organization who these people discover this thing called environmental illness which they say because of like toxic fumes and like chemicals and like bathroom sprays or nail polish even like they test milk on her which it's like I think at one point they ask her like if she drinks alcohol and she's like no I'm a milkaholic or something like that and they end up like doing injections on her of milk to try to test what what allergens she has in her system and it becomes this thing where she joins this group and they try to help her discern that but even like her comfortability in that group and the believability of what she's going through in that group feels contested and so I thought that was really interesting this perception of you think you have control of your own life but at the end of the day your isolation and your loneliness has caused you to either believe all of this stuff to be reality to where other people around you don't believe it or it's all real and you're just isolated and alone and no one's ever going to believe you and both sides of that are horrifying because then you're either a lunatic or you're a person telling the truth that no one's going to believe. And I thought that was really bleak 
but I think it's also really indicative of life in general. And I thought that it was really interesting thinking about the pandemic starting in 2020 and still, you know, people are getting diagnosed with COVID and it still exists in our society. But thinking about like medical scares and seeing people wear masks in this movie and stuff, it felt very poignant for the current time period. But I thought it was interesting to watch it through this one character's decline and even to kind of get insight into her husband's perspective where we see him at first he's like the concerned husband and he really wants to make sure she's okay but then he starts to get irritated with it and he starts to treat her negatively and it starts to just kind of spiral from there into this really bleak direction where it's like by the end of the film their relationship you're sort of watching it and wondering where exactly are they at now what exactly is going to happen and her son feels incredibly distant as well which I thought was an interesting incorporation into the film like I said the cinematography in this is brilliant they really spend a lot of time early on with a lot of wide angle shots so that it feels like Julianne Moore's character is really isolated in any and all spaces that she's in. As the film continues to pro progress, the camera moves forward and we get a lot more tighter shots on her face so that we get a lot more facial expressions and a lot more through her lens. And I thought that was really great and her character is relatively neutral, which I think makes it easy to sort of put yourself into her shoes is because of how much of a blank slate she is and I think that's really great and she does a phenomenal job at playing that character and this movie was just really different and I love films that sort of take a different and a unique approach to portraying subject matter that we might have seen in another film and this is just a brilliant movie and it's on Criterion you can pick up the blu-ray it's a hundred percent worthwhile I cannot wait to watch this movie again so have you seen safe did you love it did you hate it leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought I thought this movie was brilliant and I cannot wait to watch it again as always if you like the video and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for i'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future and as always everyone thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day